Hey, Brandon here. Welcome back to another episode of the Future Fantasy Devi Stock Report. We are in week six edition. Uh, my podcast co-host, uh, Jason DiVrienzo, and I, we are going to talk about six players today. Four stock up and two stock down Devi players. What is Devi? Devi is just another name for future fantasy assets, man. So you play Dynasty, you play Fantasy, and you want to get an early look um, at the future of uh, Dynasty Assets going to be hitting our rookie drafts, man. Hit that subscribe button. I got a lofty, lofty, lofty goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers here by the end of the year. So any hit on that subscribe button would be greatly appreciated. All right, so let's get right to it, man. We're gonna. This is from our podcast. Uh, we do a weekly podcast, the Debbie to Dynasty Football Podcast. So here are our stock up players and stock down players for week six of college football. Thanks for watching. All right, Jason, let's get to our Debbie stock report for week six. And I, I like it, man. We got some we got some uh, some deep names here. We're going to start off with the show, which right. is which is which is great, you know, because everyone loves to hear the new names. Right. So I, I'll start us off here. The guy I want to talk about, we spoke earlier about the Arizona game, but, you know, Jonah Coleman uh, was the running back for Arizona against the USC game. Five foot nine, 225 pounds. He is a true sophomore and had a really good game against USC this past weekend. 22 carries, 143 yards. He had four receptions for 37 yards as well. So he is a three star prospect coming out of high school. Um, he was ranked 36 in the 2022 class, committed to Arizona. But this game against um, USC, I thought he looked pretty good man i mean he has that low center gap gravity five foot nine 225 pounds i mean you look at him and he is a bowling ball out there yeah. but i'll tell you what he runs with good pad level i thought he had some really nice footwork he bounced some runs outside that i thought um but you just have to love i didn't look on pff which i probably should have done is to see what his yards after contact was but he had guys again. He was just so you know physical in his play strength and his low pad level and, and and everything. Guys were just bouncing off him, and he had some really nice runs. So there's not been much talk at all about you know Jonah Coleman. Now he could be a great C two C waiver add because um, um, I you know I, I think last year he looks like he had 372 yards last year total, but already this year he's almost exceeded what he ran as a freshman last year. Um, averaging 6.7 yards a carry this year, but as a you know young C2C, he could transfer, maybe go to a better program. But you know Jonah Coleman impressed me in, in that game, just his physicality and, and the, the way he kind of nimbled through the line of scrimmage and had some acceleration and you know had some you know as a sophomore you know running back, I thought he showed some skills at least to build off of that we should maybe put him on our radar just to keep an eye on him as we move forward. No, I thought he looked good in that game too, and he. He had a couple times where he was able to get past Bear Alexander, which is USC's best best defensive player that mm -hmm. they got the transfer portal. So that was really impressive by him. Um, my my Debbie stock up is going to be Florida wide receiver, true freshman Eugene Wilson the third. And the more I watch this kid, you can just see that he is a dynamic athlete. He's got elite track speed. He's a fluid mover. He's got really good footwork, which you saw in this game against Vanderbilt. He caught eight of nine of his targets for 64 yards, ran in a touchdown. And uh, he, you know, when he's on the field, it seems like Florida, the whole offense even just looks better. He got injured early on against the Tennessee game, so he hasn't been able to really get on the field until this game. And uh, he just looks like he's going to be a difference maker. The thing I hate is they are using him like Rondale Moore. Too much behind the line of scrimmage, and yeah, he's a yak guy, but he's also a deep threat. They need to use his speed, and I don't think they trust Graham Mertz. So hopefully with a new quarterback coming in so they can get Eugene Wilson the ball and they can use him a lot more in the middle of the field and as a uh, deep stretcher because this whole behind the line of scrimmage thing it's nice but it's just not going to work for him I want to see a lot more and he's capable of it he's a true freshman right yeah true freshman yeah, yeah yep. that's yeah that's good that's what you want to just see some at least some some production all right as a true freshman yeah my, good. yeah that's, uh, that's awesome uh, my second stock up player I also want to talk about a true freshman get some new fresh names out here and uh, Jeremiah nice. love Jeremiah love from your beloved Notre Dame mm -hmm. uh, team okay six foot one 195 pounds against Louisville this week uh he had five uh, carries for only 37 yards averaging 7.4 yards a carry three weeks ago we played Ohio State 
had eight carries for 57 yards, averaging 7.1. The last three weeks, he has been getting more play. And I know, Jason, you you watch your Notre Dame games, um, so maybe you can add a little to it as well. But as a true freshman, if you look at the 2026 running back class right now, there are not a lot of guys getting run at all. So, you know, we all know that Estamine is, is, you know, the guy who um, is getting the majority of the carries, he's getting the majority of the notoriety. But if he does go to the NFL, I think Jeremiah Love could slide right in and be that bell cow for Notre Dame last year. But, you know, from what I've seen for the last, you know, I did not watch his game this past week, but I did watch the Duke game uh, where he also had like five or six carries. Um, he looks pretty nimble with the ball in his hand and I'd like his, his, you know, bounce some runs outside as well. Um, but like what I see with Jeremiah Love, and like I said, got that early production from freshmen. Uh, keep an eye on him. Yeah, I said it during the Ohio State and Notre Dame game that Ajik Estime, I tweeted that Ajik Estime to me is a very good running back. Jeremiah Love is special, and you can mm-hmm. you can kind of see that on the field. He can do things that Ajik Estime cannot, and Notre Dame knows that, and that's why they keep putting him out there. That's fantastic. But, uh, my- Yeah, my Debbie stock up guy, and I'm going to the other side of the uh, Louisville with the running back, and I'm going to go with Jawar Jordan, who just Mm -hmm. continually just dominates on the ground. And uh, here's what he would not have been a guy I would be talking about, considering history tells us that undersized running backs usually do not produce. But that is changing. He's 5'10", 185 pounds. He's around the same size as a guy that's been producing in the NFL, Devon H. Uh, unfortunately is injured right now but yeah. man when he's on the field he's explosive dynamic and I see the same thing with Jordan and he just blew up Notre Dame and that defense and uh, you just see it every single week he's the most consistent player they have if they didn't have him I'm not sure I'm not sure Louisville would be putting up the amount of points and have the identity that they do. Maybe Jamari Thrash and Plummer have that connection but you take away a guy like Jordan and uh, I'm pretty sure this whole Louisville offense changes. And that tells me that Jawar Jordan is special. So for that, stock up. Uh, I've not been, I've not seen him. I've not watched him at all. Sounds like we need a. Oh, he uh, is a explosive, dynamic, fluid mover, man. I see you're going to enjoy him. Is he a sophomore or a freshman? What What is he? Uh, no, no. He's a, he's a fifth year. Right oh, he's a, oh, he's a fifth year running back. The whole time. Oh, yep. Okay. All right. So he's an older Debbie prospect. He's All an right. older guy. Yep. Okay. I so got that, it. That's so. another reason probably why he's not being talked about, but man, you cannot deny what he is doing. There you go. So there's four stock up players. So we have to talk about a player stock down. I'll talk about yes, my player and I'm going to talk about Barry and Brown. All right. So we kind of just previewed his Kentucky game here on the podcast. Six foot one, 166 pounds. He's still 166 pounds. Um, but I'll tell you the lack of production has got to be concerning. You were talking about Devin Leary earlier about his struggles in that particular game. But I mean, Brown hasn't, he's crossed the 100 yard threshold out of six weeks once. He has 258 yards after an explosive season last year. Um, I think he's still got NFL traits. I think he still is NFL bound yeah. um, because the yeah. NFL is always going to scout traits. They're not, they don't care about production. Yeah. They don't care about any of that stuff. I think they care about traits and how they translate to an NFL field. If he's twitchy, I still believe he has that, but I want to bring him up for a Debbie stock down piece because you know, if, if Barry and Brown is someone that you really loved last year and that, and you watched his film, it'd be a great time to go out and acquire him right now. So, because he That's isn't producing, point. he isn't producing right now. Um, then that lack of can, you know, production, you know, we're all into the guys that are on the field with the highlight films all the time. He's kind of, you know, you were talking about, you know, key earlier as well. Um, just the whole Kentucky offense seems to be kind of a muck this year. So he's going to be my stock down player. Not that I don't think he's ever going to, you know, make it to our dynasty roster, but I'm bringing him a stock down as maybe a buying opportunity. If in fact you like him and you want to go acquire him now, I think would be the time. I think that is a great point because I'm not sure if that once he leaves the uh, NFL combine, NFL teams are just going to shy away from this guy. I'm pretty sure they're going to fall in love. Uh, so I like that call. Uh, my stock down guy is going to be Clemson wide receiver Adam Randall, who everybody's been waiting on. 
He's got that size at 6'2", 6'3", 230 pounds. He's supposed to be that next big bodied receiver out of Clemson. And that, that he can just, he can't stay on the field. He's losing playing time, even when he's on the, on the field to Bo Collins. And uh, unfortunately for Adam Randall, it just does not look like mm-hmm. it's going to happen for him anytime soon. And it may not happen at all based on some of the comments that's coming out of Clemson. So uh, Adam Randall was a guy that a lot of people were really hyped up on, hoping <sighs> for him to just be that next level big receiver and uh I, i'm not seeing it and it's hard to see it when he's not on the field so for that yeah. he's definitely a stock down yeah you want to talk about a player that was hyped up dude man i'll tell you what this guy yeah. i remember being in my drafts two years ago and people were just taking him he was really really hyped up so yeah that's uh that's the game of debbie my friend that's that's uh yeah. <laughs> that's uh you got the heartbreak with the um you know, that comes along with the game. So there you guys got it. Those are our six uh, Devi stock players for week six.